And right now, folks, we're going to jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat. And folks, if you haven't checked it out yet, on the front page of TFNN right now, the Tiger Forex Report by our man Teddy. This kicked off about a few weeks ago. Teddy puts out updates every Monday with a full report on the Forex market. He talks crude. He got, talks the 30-year bond in there, as well as many of the main pairings that you look at. And in this environment, folks, Forex notes and bonds, energy prices, crude, driving so much of what's happened. You heard our man Kevin Hinks talking about the crude contract as we kicked off the program, trading at $95 now. The last time the Fed was meeting, you were at about $120 coming into that. And folks, this is the last week. I encourage you to sign up for Teddy's report, enter the code TEDDY25, you lock in 25% savings, you get the newsletter from a month, worst case scenario, it still comes with a 30 bet. 30 day money back guarantee and we got a lot to talk about this morning on fed day teddy kegstack good morning good morning so where do you want to kick things off man we got some action in notes and bonds we got a little action in the crude contract uh volatility persisting and of course we got a fed decision at two o'clock today eastern time teddy where uh where's your head on where we kick it off in the conversation this morning Oh, I'm waiting for two o'clock to come and go so things can get back to normal trading. <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest with you. <laughs> so. Now, as a forex trader, you know, do you do you try like do you have an analysis? Do you, are you looking for seventy five? Are you looking for fifty? Are you trying to square what's going to happen in, in that type of scenario, or are you just letting the chips fall and and then making a plan of of where the Fed comes in at two o'clock today Eastern? Uh, right now, my, my viewpoint is that they're probably going to do the three quarters of a point, which is pretty much the expectation. I think sure. the full point is off the table. I don't really think they're going to do that one. I would be surprised if they do. Um, it, I think the biggest thing is going to be the speak afterwards. Uh, yeah. I can't see that they're really going to change anything um, just because the, they're already been there's, everyone knows they're behind the curve already. So I think they're sure. going to be very cautious on what they say, especially with, with the numbers, how they've been coming out the past month or two. You know, and remember, we don't have another Fed meeting now for two months. Yeah. So I, I, I think what they're really going to, I mean, that gives them time to begin with. So I think what they're going to do is just give you the same blah, blah, blah they've been giving you and say that they're going to reevaluate things, <clears throat> excuse me, over the next couple of months as the economic numbers come out. So what, what's interesting is that the uh, interest rates have been railing the way they have over the past week and a half, yeah. especially. So, and we've come up to a, you know, there's, if you look at the 30 year and the 10 year, we are on a daily basis. You pretty much have a reverse head and shoulders breakout that it occurred kind of or is is forming right now. So we're at, but the thing is, the resistance level we're coming at now is also an extreme. So if they raise three quarters of a point with an expectation of another half to three quarters in the in the uh, September meeting. It's going to be hard for the interest rate markets to hold these highs right now because you remember it's the market that's bringing these rates down right now, not the Fed. The Fed is pushing yes. for higher rates. So I think you're going to see, I mean, no matter what, it's a Fed day. It's always, I always tell people, unless you're in a trade, work managing it, don't get in, in, into a trade until after this is over, until the next day because the algos are going to be firing on all cylinders, especially in the last like hour before the Fed meeting, you know, so you're going to have yeah. a lot of thin volume, some fancy phantom moves where you're just, I mean, if you look at the, how the dollar is traded in, in most of the pairings and even how the interest rates have traded over the past couple of days and especially the last five, six sessions, you're, all bulls and bears are getting slaughtered, especially the weak ones. If you're just dabbling in the market, get trying to get a long or a short position on, you've been getting just, just chewed up. You know, there's no real follow through. We're going to start to see some. We're going to see a, tra a new, either a continuation of the trend going on right now, or we're we're coming to an inflection point where I think we're going to have a reversal. In my opinion, I think we're going to see the reversal because the bond market. This is we had some auctions, and now we come into this number. After this, we have two months before the Fed's going to do something, and I think we're going to start to see the rates go higher in the market, by, meaning the bond prices and ten-year prices going down, and then that'll make, bring strength back to the dollar as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I had it up the the head and shoulders on those formations on the thirty year, on the ten year. Some pretty wild moves late last week, right? In the ten year mm -hmm. and the thirty year, the ten year was up three full points, man. As as the yield on that ten year was diving lower, coming into this meeting, and I would agree that uh, I think this meeting more so. There might be a lot of nuance on how you can interpret what the chairman says because he's not mm -hmm. going to have a lot of concrete data to actually go off, right? You got two months. Right. The last inflation number we got was like 9.1%. We got 3.6% unemployment. What else is he going to say? 
but right. we're going to wait for the data, and then maybe he'll slip in a little word that people might try and interpret, but nonetheless, man, it's going to be a waiting game for that data because mm -hmm. you make a great point. Two months, we're going to get so much data by the time they have their next meeting. It almost doesn't matter what he says, and of course, it always matters what he says, folks, but in that mm -hmm. context, man, there's just going to be so much data out before their next meeting. That's, that's kind of probably what he's going to point to, as has been the case. Jumping right. around, um, let's talk a little crude, if we could, okay. because commodities. Uh, we talked to him about Kevin Hinks. He made a great point in terms of, you know, one thing he may talk about is energy prices, where they are this meeting versus last meeting. We're kind of sitting near the, the lower area of support for crude recently at that $95, mm -hmm. $96 range. What's your take on the crude market right now? Uh, well, it definitely has stabilized. That's for sure. It's obvious by the charts. Uh, I still, I'm still a crude bull. I think that this is just a, a little pause before the uh, the next move higher, and and especially now once we get through this Fed meeting, we if they keep this stance of higher interest rates moving forward and are really still very strong in that state, you know, in that stance moving through the rest of the year, I can't see how crude oil prices and commodity prices aren't going to get a rebound, you know? So you got to remember, we've had such markets go out like they come in. We've had such an accelerated move in these trends for us to come back and, and consolidate like we're doing. That's not a bearish thing. That's, that's sure. a profit taking and an adjusting to it, you know, that overwhelming strength, you know? So there's no real forces that are going to really make us say that, you know, crude oil is going to go down, you know, I mean, especially because OPEC's at maximum production. Russian oil is not making it to the market except for, well, if, unless you believe the rumors, you know, that are, there's an underground market being, you know, moving oil around. But, you know, as far as moving with Europe, you know, you have more energy restrictions, especially oil. How does that be, make oil bearish? You know, because sure. the demand for Europe, they're they're looking for other sources now. You know, and that's going to make you know the, the the transportation issue. You know, the whole logistics of everything that changes their infrastructure and how they have to move things. And these things don't happen overnight. These things take Oof, right? half a year to a year to manifest. Yeah. You know, and we're heading into winter time. So and that's what I have to tell people. Like you if you look at how we've had this pullback in heating oil and natural gas and gasoline and crude and stuff like that, well, we're on the verge of winter time. We've had a very soft summer. I mean, yeah, it's hot, you know, but as as a whole, we've had a decent summertime conditions, you know. What happens we haven't had any hurricanes, we're heading into that's hurricane wait, yeah. season. You yep. know, I mean, you live down in Florida. I don't got to tell you that. You That's know? why I was going to chime in and go, man, there's always some hurricanes. We're coming into August that roll through the Gulf, right. and that always gives a little volatility to crude, especially along with everything else. Yeah. Right. You know, and so, and I, I mean, unless we somehow pass through all this, you know, which you never know, we could get really eat lucky with the weather. Maybe sure. there's something that eases the things between Russia and Ukraine and also the talks between Russia and Europe. If that would happen, well, then I could say I would start to become more neutral to bearish on oil. But I think right now it's really just a resting point before it starts to go back up and test the highs. Hey, can you hang with us for a few more minutes at the end of the program? Sure. All right, sure. perfect. We're going to talk to Yen, folks. We're going to talk a little bit of Euro when we get back here. We'll Sounds finish it up with our man, Teddy. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 1.1% right now, jumping over to the dollar yen. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. And folks, if you haven't checked it out, head on over to the front page of the TFNN. Check out the Tiger Forex report this month. Code Teddy25. You save 25% forever as long as you subscribe. Teddy, I have a chart of the dollar yen up here. A uh, little bit of a pullback over the last couple weeks. We're up a bit over the last few days. What's your take on the yen? Sitting at about 137 right now. Well, you know, if you look at it just on a technical basis, if I remove all the geopolitical and the Fed and central bank stuff right now, if we didn't have a Fed FOMC meeting today, and if, let's say the yen settled where it's at right now after this little three-day little pause, you know, and it's um, bearish uh, tone, I would say it's actually looking kind of bearish, you know, like especially if we were to, let's say we settled where we're at right now today, forget FOMC meeting, and had a sell-off, say, tomorrow that took out the low from a few sessions ago. That to me would be a very bearish indication because we really stretched the support on this correction. Now, overall, this trend is so exacerbated that it doesn't mean that this correction is really that extreme. But if sure. you just look at it technically, not taking all these other things to account. We like the technicals. It, yeah, it's that's looking like it wants to it's like it wants to sell off, you know, like this is a rally to sell. However, 
I think after the number, especially because we have a two-month reprieve now, I mean, the Japanese Central Bank has not done a thing. Their finance ministry has not done a thing. So if unless they come out and do something while our Fed's doing something today or some news comes from them that they're not going to – now they're going to okay. pull the trigger – we're, I, th I see a rally coming, you know, right? We can make take out the highs and go up to 140, even 145 before the next Fed meeting. Wild stuff, man. Especially, and I had it on a daily. I put it on a weekly. Pretty, mm -hmm. it, it's looking pretty parabolic at some point, man. From almost 100, right to 140, remarkable. Right. Uh, and we only have a few seconds, Teddy. What about the euro dollar as we wrap it up? Just above parity right now. You still looking for yeah. for under parity? I am. I am. I Especially, you know, if you look at how it's traded the last six days. Uh, the, the pound, the dollar, uh, the pound dollar and the euro dollar, it's been really choppy and I think it's really ready to sell off one more time. Teddy, thanks so much for the conversation, man. We appreciate it as always. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, Tommy. Take care. Take care.